patient comes to your clinic with sharp shooting pain in his tooth, hasn't slept all night due to this intense pain, and may or may not carry a bottle of cold water at the site of tooth pain. What will be your diagnosis? How will you treat this patient? I'm Dr. Mitali Behel, an odontist and cosmetic dentist. And today I'm going to talk about a very important topic in dentistry, irreversible pulpitis. In my last video, I shared briefly about irreversible pulpitis, which refers to persistent inflammatory condition of the pulp caused by a noxious stimuli. The inflammation being severe in which the pulp does not have the capacity to return to its normal or healthy form, necessitating root canal therapy. If this is left untreated, it will progress towards pulp necrosis and apical periodontitis. But do you ever wonder that why does this happen? What causes severe inflammation of the pulp leading to this intense tooth pain? Well, the predominant irritant of the pulp is the microorganisms. Bacteria and their byproducts enter the pulp via caries, trauma, fracture of the cusp, percolation around the restoration, periodontal disease. Second common cause is untreated reversible pulpitis. Patients neglecting or procrastinating tooth pain in the initial stage, in which pain goes away within seconds of removal of the stimuli. This reversible condition, if left untreated, progresses to irreversible condition. Other causes of pulp inflammation can be mechanical, chemical or thermal hydrogenic errors. For a dentist, diagnosing this condition is apparently very simple. So will you directly jump towards root canal treatment? Or will you follow the five steps of diagnosis? Remember, inappropriate diagnosis instigates inappropriate treatment. Number one, listen to the patient and take history. Listening serves as important clues to identify whether the pulp is in its acute stage, chronic stage, or is it necrosis. It helps the clinician to guide as to which diagnostic test is to be performed. Moreover, taking medical history is equally important. So in case of irreversible pulpitis, patient will complain of sharp shooting and lingering pain after the removal of the stimulus, which means that it takes minutes to several hours for pain to subside after the stimulus has been removed. Usually, analgesics are required to stop pain. But in later chronic stages, pain becomes dull, boring, gnawing and throbbing. Second, pain will be spontaneous, which means continuous pain unprovoked by any stimuli. But do you know that why do we have spontaneous pain in irreversible pulpitis? That's because the inflammation present in the pulp tissue causes exudation with consequent increase in the intrapulpal pressure, thus causing continuous unprovoked pain. Third, ask for aggravating and relieving factors. In irreversible pulpitis, heat intensifies pain, like after having hot tea or coffee, and is usually relieved by cold. The reason being that heat causes dilation of the blood vessels, whereas cold contracts the vascular bed, reducing the intrapulpal pressure, thereby causing relief to the patient. Which is why you must have seen that sometimes patients come to your clinic with a bottle of cold water placed at the site of tooth pain. Also, pain aggravates on lying down. You must have seen patients complaining that they got up at three in the morning because of intense pain. This happens because of head movements or other maneuver at night, which causes increase in the intracranial pressure, thereby intensifying pain. Fourth, pain is radiating. It radiates to ear, eye, temple, or the lower jaw, depending on the tooth affected. Step two, visual examination. After listening to the patient and taking history, move towards visual examination. On inspection, you might see deep cavity exposing the pulp, any old or new restoration, 
fracture of the cusp exposing the pulp. Also, don't forget to look for trauma from occlusion. Number third, percussion test. In irreversible pulpitis, usually tenderness on percussion is positive. The reason being increased intrapulpal pressure. Gently tap on the tooth either with the handle of the instrument or a gentle finger pressure is enough to elicit a response. But do you remember that in my previous video I mentioned that tenderness on percussion indicates spread of the infection in the periodontal ligament. In irreversible pulpitis, as the disease progresses or in the later stages if it is left untreated, the infection spreads in the periodontal ligament and the percussion test becomes positive. And at this time, it is called pulpitis with apical periodontitis. Number four, take a radiograph. Radiographs in this case may arguably be the most reliable of all diagnostic tests. The radiolucency provides information of the extent of the carious lesion, presence of interproximal caries or secondary caries, which is not visible during visual examination. The periapical area shows normal appearance in the beginning, but a slight widening of the periodontal ligament may be evident in advanced stages of pulpitis. But I've seen that in some cases, despite these diagnostic aids, identifying the tooth responsible for pain can be difficult. Like in this case, patient complains of severe pain in the right upper quadrant, but cannot identify which tooth is it? Is it right second molar, first molar, or the second premolar? Quick question. Do you know that patients with pulpal disease in the later stages have difficulty in locating the diseased tooth? And do you know why does this happen? That's because the pulp has few or no proprioceptive fibers. Also, there is extensive branching of the dental nerve axons. Well, it's up to the skill of the dentist to correctly diagnose the origin of the pulp disease. That is where the role of vitality test comes into play. Number five, vitality test. We can perform cold test and patient will experience lingering pain. But remember, I mentioned in the beginning that in case of irreversible pulpitis, heat intensifies pain. For locating the tooth, perform heat test. Warm gutta percha must be applied to the cervical area of the tooth. That's where the enamel, which is a poor conductor of heat, is thinner, so response will be rapid. The tooth with pulpitis will experience intense, unbearable and lingering pain. Use cold water to stop pain or in some cases a shot of LA is required. Quick fact. If the tooth is necrosed, heat application produces no response. Also, in case of irreversible pulpitis, electric test is not very helpful. In this case, in the upper right second molar, heat intensified pain. Tenderness to percussion was negative. Diagnosis is acute irreversible pulpitis or symptomatic irreversible pulpitis with normal apical tissues. First molar had no pulpitis. Second premolar, heat intensified pain. Percussion test in this case was positive. Diagnosis is acute irreversible pulpitis or symptomatic irreversible pulpitis with acute apical periodontitis also called as symptomatic apical periodontitis. Please don't get confused with the names. Before finishing this video, let me discuss the last thing with all of you. That some authors like Grossman, Ingle and WHO classified pulpal diseases as acute or chronic irreversible pulpitis. Whereas Cohen, Tronstrand and American Board of Endodontics classified pulpal disease as symptomatic and asymptomatic pulpitis. Acute irreversible pulpitis is the sudden sharp shooting and lingering pain. That's how the dictionary defines the word acute. 
something that's severe and intense. The word chronic on the other hand means something which is persisting for a long time. So inflammation of the pulp persisting for a long time becomes chronic. Chronic stage has less severe symptoms as compared to acute stage. Like patient in its chronic stage will complain of dull, throbbing, gnawing and boring pain. In other books, you will see the terms symptomatic and asymptomatic pulpitis. Symptomatic irreversible pulpitis refers to a pulpal state characterized by clinical symptoms. Asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis, on the other hand, just as the name suggests, is the pulpal state in which cases have no clinical symptoms. But on visual examination, it reveals deep caries or trauma exposing the pulp. All of these conditions require root canal treatment. Well, all the wonderful dentists out there watching this video, I'm hoping that by now you all are clear about the key points of irreversible pulpitis. But don't stop here. Use this knowledge to apply on your patients. If possible, rush to your friend and discuss about pulpitis. This in turn will enhance your own knowledge. Just like I say, learn, talk and share and know. For questions, go ahead and comment below. We'll be happy to help you back. For more educational videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dentistry for You. Also, you can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn and Quora, Dentistry for You.